everyone. It's Steve Verrier with Lake State Mortgage and the FloridaMortgageCenter.com. And uh, this is now a familiar setting to me at the uh, studios here at FlagwithTV.com, uh, where I've been with Craig Hawkinson, the proprietor and main host of several series that you do on FlagwithTV.com, Some, somewhat similar to what we do with our, our tips, tricks, strategies, and techniques to deliver people on Saturdays to help them get along with I their think, life. I think we work well together. I think that you have some... Uh, very nicely done shows that you have on your site, and I'm oh, hoping that I please. can kind of uh, compliment you on oh, that with what we do. Oh, my so. goodness, please, I'm please. serious. Uh, looking at your studio uh, here and your operation, I mean, we, um, you know, again, my major uh, facet in life is helping people with uh, purchasing a new home or uh, refinancing their existing home. That's what I do for a living. But we have found that using video... Um, is is just a great way to stay out in the community so people know who you are and what you do. Well, I so, love to hear that. Thank you for saying that. And I, yeah, uh, no, it's a great strategy. Yeah. So, um, so you've come out here on the scene now with FlaglerTV.com. So, um, as far as tips, tricks, techniques, strategies for our studio audience here, so to speak. I know you're not sure. all in the studio. We don't even mm -hmm. we don't even have a clap roll. Everyone clap. <laughs> The studio the audience uh, is pretty yes. quiet today. The TV audience, so. <laughs> yes. Yes, all oh, the studio <laughs> audience might jump in our lap, <laughs> supposedly. Right. I don't know. Uh, it, it's a cat, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, it, there yeah, she goes. Yeah. So, in any case, uh, let's get started then. So, uh, being a professional in this industry, not only am I learning a bunch of uh, tips myself for what we do here, but um, so what would you have to offer for some quick tips for the average consumer who wants to get involved in using video? I understand you got your drone license now and yes. um, that's exciting for a lot of people. Um, you know, with the drone market is um, expanding tremendously. People, the private market for it is definitely Absolutely. taking over. We're hearing more and more of people shooting drones out of the sky and and, and, you know, negative things like that. But I'm sure there is a positive impact to this, uh, to this new uh, industry. So why don't we talk about that? Sure. Uh, first of all, there, there has been some negative press on, on, on drones. But people who fly them legally and people like me who have gotten their uh, drone certificate, uh, your utmost, the most important thing before you fly that drone is safety. Mm -hmm. For one thing, knowing the airspace you're flying in, like uh, the uh, if you're near an airport, you need to know is that a controlled space? Do you need to contact right. the tower before you fly? Mm -hmm. Most times around here, that's not necessary. It's what's called Class G airspace, which means it's uncontrolled. Right. So right. Uh, you know the other important thing is drones should never fly over 400 feet above mm -hmm. ground level. Mm -hmm. That is your ceiling. Uh, for, is that is, for the communications for, between the remote and the receiver? The no, it, it is the receiver, for, it's or? more for safety of the drone. Mm -hmm. you, you can actually go higher uh, and still remain uh, in control of your drone with your mm -hmm. radio. Mm -hmm. But it's just, for one thing, the FAA has regulated that drones don't fly over 400 feet. Now, there are okay. some exceptions. If you, you can request an exception from the FAA, mm -hmm. and they may allow it. Right. Uh, right. Now, you do not have to get a certificate to fly a drone. If you're a hobbyist, you don't necessarily need to go take the knowledge test right. at, a, at a designated testing center. But what you do have to do is register that drone. Your right. drone has to be registered. It's very easy to do. Uh, uh -huh. Go on the FAA's website. It's not difficult. Uh, it takes about you know, is 10 there, minutes. Is there a fine or a penalty for having an unregistered drone? I, I'm sure there is, but I do not know what, it, what that right. fine would be. So um, I would imagine that's what they're looking for is, oh, here's a crashed drone where it's not supposed to be. Right. Well, uh, and there's been of stories of, I'm not aware of any drone accidents that have caused property damage or personal injury mm -hmm. in Flagler County. I mean... There may be, but I have not heard of it. Right. I right. think they're kind of rare, uh, but occasionally, I, I uh, did hear of someone 
who was hit by a drone. Right. And they couldn't find the person. Or, well, that person was breaking so, the law. You cannot, you need to fly well, your drone. And ignorance of the law is no excuse. Right. So anyone who's right. planning on, uh, you know, getting a drone or operating a drone, uh, you definitely should make sure you're up to speed on the local regulation. So that's the most Absolutely. important out of that. Now, um, are there, are there uh, safety issues other than, you know, common sense ones? And, and I don't want to ever presume anything because we know common sense is often a, a lesson that's learned <laughs> in the school of hard knocks, um, you know. There are that. some, uh, well, it might sound common sense, but... Uh, I mean, what are some major mistakes not, you see rookies people doing? People not understanding their drone, not reading the manual. Mm -hmm. not, most of the drones have homing devices. Mm -hmm. So where if you wait and you sync it to the satellites properly and you lose control of it for some reason, it'll you can hit a home switch. It'll go to, I think mine like goes to 60 feet and it'll come and it'll land exactly where you took off from. So Pretty that's cool. a very important feature. Pretty it really cool. helps prevent flyaways. Yeah. But you have to go through a procedure <laughs> to link it up. And you have to know every drone Can is different. Can someone steal your drone in the sky? Like if they start, you know, sending it's the same It's very signal? unlikely because uh, the drones are uh, used to multiple signals. And, and they'll kind of switch signals mm -hmm. if they have a I competing signal. I would think there'd be signal. some sort of encryption between There is. The, uh, There's an encryption, and it'll, it'll switch signals if there's a competing signal. Mm -hmm. Most of the drones will. I see. I see. Uh, hmm. the, the other thing is make sure that you're not breaking airspace rules right you know yeah so and, and i mean so mainly it just seems to me like it, it can be very fun but you can run afoul of the the law i mean and especially if airspace rules involve i mean because most of the negative stuff we hear is people infringing on other people's privacy and and things of that, that nature. yeah but uh, i will tell you this on most drones the ang the it's an extremely wide angle lens. Right. You have to be to recognize somebody. You have to be right up on them. I see. I mean, if you see a, a drone overhead or flying along the beach, so it's not you're like, not, it's not like be... the NSA satellites. No, then. no. Okay. Well, now, that's, that... that should put uh, you know a lot of fears uh, to rest. Then exactly. Then, Most people that have like been in my drone shots yeah. are unrecognizable little dots. I see. And when they're I not, I can't. As a professional, as a mm -hmm. licensed right. drone operator, and, I, I and can't, people would I can't use, use for... their right. I can't use their likeness of someone mm -hmm. I've shot anyway without getting them to sign a release ah, without so, yeah. risking so getting gonna, sued. Yeah, so risking I do sued. not have sure. any desire to get people's faces or likenesses in a shot unless I have prior permission. And right. let me mention one more thing very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I try never to fly directly over people's heads. Right. It's not a wise thing to do. It's you're not going to buzz the conning tower. Right. right. Yeah, it, yeah. It's just. Ghost it, rider. And if I and if I do, <laughs> yeah. And if I do have to fly over people's heads, <laughs> we have a plan. You know, I've talked to these people and they right. know what's going okay. on. Okay. All right. Well, guys. Uh, I mean, you know, whether you're a hobbyist or or um, you know, looking for a business use um, for these uh, drones. Uh, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, Craig is a great resource uh, for um, you know your future commercial needs with uh, with a drone. And uh, again, if you're a hobbyist, he'd also be a good source of information to help keep you out of trouble. So check him out on FlaggerTV.com uh, in the future. And of course, we love you. Uh, stay in tune. This one went a little longer than normal, but I, I think it's important because we do see a lot more drone activity now. And it is going to be um, a headline item, I think, as we move forward into the future. So thanks again for the, uh, you know, the small education introduction sure. to uh, to drones and their capabilities, Craig. We well, appreciate thank you that. for talking to me. I sure appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, take care, guys. And don't forget, if you need any uh, mortgage assistance or anything like that, our information's below. And uh, we always love hearing from you. And if you're a drone flyer, hey, let us know. All right? We'd, we'd love to hear from you guys, too. All right, have a great weekend. Bye, everyone.